Yo, welcome to the channel guys. My name is Dave. I thought I'd introduce myself by sharing something intimate with you, you know, like my top 10 list of games. And as a gamer, that's very, very personal. So yeah, I think we can talk about that and I'll let you know about myself a little bit more. But further ado, let's just jump into it. Just a quick disclaimer, this is my top 10 games that I've played. So not that these games are better than the other, it's just the ones that I've enjoyed the most. Number 10 is God of War. The only reason it's number 10 is because I didn't get to experience the full game properly. I was playing on the Steam Deck and Steam Deck you have to kind of lower some resolutions and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the only reason it's down here. I enjoyed the story, I enjoyed the world. I actually want to play, of course, Ragnarok. It had one of the best combat systems I had played. That axe, guys, like throwing an axe and it comes back to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like You don't just get that anyway. Like that was so satisfying. And yeah. Number nine, I have GTA 5. I don't know, it's because also I didn't finish GTA 4. So I know that people say GTA 4 is better than GTA 5, but I played GTA 5 and that was amazing. Three characters, you know, and having like Franklin have his own thing, Michael, Trevor, and then I got sucked in into like online during COVID. 2020 everyone was i mean we all thought we were gonna die so, <laughs> so that's why we just threw ourselves into games like i would rather die while playing the games because every gamer can probably attest to this there's just not enough time to play games like there's just never enough time like and there's all these games coming out and it had very nice mechanics great graphics great story great music you know it's gta so yeah number eight is sleeping dogs Bro, like this game, <laughs> this is like a gem that I found. I don't know how I found it, but all I know is I had this game in my computer at some point and geez, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I always sell the game as GTA with Kung Fu. That's always what I say to people to get them to play it. It's amazing. It has a great story, great combat system. It was Oof. I don't think I have a lot to say about the game rather than I enjoyed it. I guess I love the culture. I love how brutal it is. Like it was very brutal. And I love the characters. Everyone was on point. It's actually very similar to Batman Arkham series, you know. And I've only played Arkham City and Arkham Origins. I haven't played Arkham Knight. Well, I did, but I didn't finish it. So it made me think of that. And I love those games too. So that's why it's like highly rated by me. Number seven, we have Horizon Zero Dawn. This is also another game that I played on the Steam Deck. I actually got my Steam Deck, when was it, two years ago? Uh, I lived in the Netherlands at the time. And yeah, when I played it, I also didn't get to experience the full game itself. So I had to lower graphics and stuff. But oh my God, like that was the second RPG I had ever played. I didn't know RPGs were so good, you know? And yeah, I just, I fell in love with the whole game, if that makes sense. Like, I, I, I was new to RPGs. I was new to PlayStation games because I was an Xbox guy. And it was a bow and arrow. The world was crazy. All that, like the combination, you know, like the voice acting. Side quests in this game, for me, are the best side quests I've ever seen in any game. Hmm, maybe not, maybe not. I think number one has the best side quests. But it's very good to a point that I can compare it to number one. And it has a very satisfying conclusion. It's just, oof, it's amazing. And like, I also played the DLC. That's how deep I was into this game. So yeah, I think that's why it's up there for me. Number six is Max Payne 3. I mean, I mean if you've played the game, you know like it's one of the best shooters ever. And I struggle with first person shooters. That's why then I enjoyed that game because it was a third person shooter. You don't find those a lot. And it satisfied every urge, every need I had to play a shooter game. It was so well done, guys. And I think the only thing for me was the length. I didn't feel like it was big enough, you know, but you know, it's, you know, your game is good when you don't want it to end. And that's how I felt about Max Payne 3. And it's like a core memory for me, you know, like it's a very strong it built me as a gamer, you know, like I feel like that's an important game in my life. So that's why then it's up there. 
Number five is Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Oh. So, I mean, I'm new to PlayStation. I actually only got my PlayStation in 2023, June, May. And yeah, I played the Uncharted series and that was the last one in the entry. And everything was beautiful. For some reason, I've always felt like PlayStation has better graphics than Xbox. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just maybe a placebo thing. But yeah, they took advantage of the PS5. The climbing system, the combat, the driving. Oh my god, guys. That game was so good. And I think it's a good introduction to PlayStation games in particular because they utilize the climbing system, which I've found that is there in God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon Zero Dawn. You know what I mean? Like that feels like it's a Sony climbing system. And it was very good. It was well done there and well utilized. That was a very well done game. Like I think the overall experience for me was great. And I'm not saying that it's better than the other Uncharted games. It's just the experience I had with the game was great. I remember the story in Uncharted 2. That was, that was, you know, like that feels like the best story in Uncharted for me. But I couldn't put it there because it still felt a bit clunky, you know, because when I only played it recently. Number four, we have Sekiro. This is my feel good game, guys. You know, when you're feeling blue and you don't know what to play, that's the game that I go to. It was my first Souls game. I've actually never finished any other Souls game. But I've only attempted two, you know, and I've finished Sekiro four times to get the 100% and Platinum Trophy. Well, I don't know what they call it in Xbox. Is it Platinum Trophy? I don't think so, actually. But I got it 100% and I think that game is one of the best games ever made. I've never played other Souls games. It was super difficult, but it was worth it. Like, I don't see myself stopping playing that game. You know, I'm just going to keep playing it forever. So it holds a very special place in my heart. It was very challenging. I couldn't sleep some of these days, but it was also very easy at the same time, if that makes sense. Like I only took like eight tries to beat Ishin, you know, like the final boss. I'd never, like I never went above 10 tries at a boss. Which boss gave me the most trouble though? Corrupted Monk. Actually the first Corrupted Monk, you know, the one that's like a shadow. That was, <laughs> that was crazy for me because every other boss then was not that difficult. But also, Demon of Hatred, that guy, that guy was a piece of shit. <laughs> that guy sucked. He made me almost quit it. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, I finished it like nine times or whatever. But the fights are so long. That was the thing. The fights between Ishin were shorter than the fights between the Demon of Hatred, you know? Number three is Spider-Man 2. Oh, guys. I, I finished it a month ago and I can't I can't imagine a game I was so immersed into so much, especially as someone who loves comic books. I remember as a kid I used to read comic books, but we didn't have a lot of comic books in South Africa. We had our own called like Super Strikers. I don't know if it's our own actually, but I, I always figured it was. We had Super Strikers, which was like a football comic book. And then I got into Spider-Man and I got into all of the superheroes. So Spider-Man 2, the game itself, it just felt well done. It is, it was well cooked. And I know it gets a lot of hate for woke side quests and stuff like that. But I don't know, for me, I don't feel that. Like, I, I feel like the more woke, the better, right? So yeah, if it's in your face and like, it's not funny and not enjoyable, then I get, I get that part. But it was still enjoyable for me, you know, like, and because it was fun, and because I also know what representation actually means, you know, like what it does for people who are marginalized, you know, stuff like that. I feel like it was a good balance. The game had very much fictional characteristics, but then they were basing it sometimes on the real world. And some people are scared to hear that, you know, people are scared to hear that the world is ending. <laughs> Because it is, you know, like, let's be honest, let's be honest. You can feel the heat, you know? And yeah, because of that, people just hate these games. And yeah, I think Spider-Man 2 was very well done. The action sequences, the swinging, the graphics. And it was a good balance of using the characters, you know, like MJ wasn't so much of a big deal like in Spider-Man 1. I didn't like that. I'm not so good with stealth games, actually. I remember I tried to play a stealth game Ghost Recon. <laughs> it didn't work for me as a kid. That's when then I realized 
maybe I should just go in guns blazing. And speaking of guns blazing, number two is Red Dead Redemption 2. Whew, I don't know, like words, I don't know. <laughs> I'd never been moved so much emotionally by a game before until this game. I didn't think that would happen. <laughs> you know, obviously, I went in there, I'm like, okay, it's Red Dead Redemption, it's GTA with horses. You know, it wasn't at all. That was the most immersive game I've ever played. Great graphics at the time, great story, great voice acting, great music. Like, if if number one was in there, this would be number one. That's That's all I can say. It touched every aspect that I look for in a game like the combat was balanced the horses were well designed the world was alive and random and crazy you know and the story just unraveled and unraveled at a very very good pace i remember that scene when you're coming back after end of chapter five or chapter four when you're coming back from that island and they play the song unshaken i shed a tear I shed a tear. I didn't. I didn't expect it to do that to me, and that's also because I smoke weed on occasion. And I think when I was playing the game, I was always like elevated and very much immersed. And that actually is a thing that I do a lot. I'm immersed in the games. I I think I like to role play. <laughs> you know, this is something to talk to my girlfriend about. I think I like to role play, and because of my ADHD, it's easy to go in. You know and be stimulated by this one thing and think a specific way and just do that a lot. That's how my ADHD shows up really, you know? Before we jump into number one, here's some honorable mentions. And at number one, we have the best game ever made, in my opinion. This was the first game I played on my Steam Deck. And Geralt of Rivia, guys. That game had the best of everything. It was long enough. It was my first RPG. Geralt of Rivia, there was boobies. You know, like there was a lot. <laughs> there was violence. There was betrayal, comedy. Really, I don't know, it felt very good because even Geralt himself, well, he's someone that I can relate to, especially as a big guy in South Africa, like a black big guy. To be honest, I've been scared to walk behind girls because I'm like, I don't want to scare them because that's how big I am, <laughs> you know? And Geralt was struggling with stuff of like power. He had a lot of power, but he was still an outcast of some sort, you know? And being a tall guy myself in a short country, <laughs> I've always felt like an outcast. In our schools, you stand in assembly and then you queue like, all the students. So you would do that maybe on a Monday morning. I was always the one popping out. My head was up there. If I did something and I was trying to run away from the principal, he would see me. There was no way I could hide. You know, like that felt, I don't know. I was like an outlier. It didn't feel good. <laughs> so I really related to Geralt about all of those. And it was so intricate. Like there were so many books, I had never read, like I don't read books in real life, but I was reading those books in the game, I was reading all of them. I was going for all the armor, I was playing every side quest that I could play. Gwent guys, let's talk about Gwent. How can like, it, how can a card game be so good? You know, sometimes I spent like a gaming session, like two, three hours just playing Gwent, you know, to get the right cards. Oh, there was actually also like missions that were just Gwent, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's my top 10 guys and I hope you got to know me a little bit better through this and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next playthroughs. Thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video. Cheers.